Today we're looking at floats and you're going to be able to understand floats in 15 minutes and get them to work in a responsive design in that time. CSS floats are the way we build websites even in 2014. Floats have been around for over a decade in web design and they are how, really how we build websites in 2014 even still. Flexbox, you've probably heard about Flexbox. You can do some great and very powerful thing, things with it. But why can't we use that today in our designs? The simple answer is browser support. IE9 and below doesn't support Flexbox and IE10 even only has partial support with its own syntax. So for that reason we cannot use Flexbox in the majority of the sites we build. As time goes on and IE9 and IE8 and IE7 die, well then we can build sites with um, Flexbox. But today in 2014 we're still building sites with CSS. That's just the way how it's done. We're stuck with floats, but luckily they're very powerful and they're very easy to use. Originally floats were designed for laying out images within content and floating them either left or right as we can see within that content. Today they're still used in that context, but even more powerful than that, we're using full columns as and we're floating them left or we're floating them right. And that's how we're designing our layouts today, even in 2014. One thing to keep in mind is the elements within other floated elements can be floated as well. So if we've got a floated column, then we can also have internal elements and divs and spans and links, etc. So they can all be floated within a floated column. That's always something to keep in mind. It's not just one level of float we can have. We can have floats within floats. Let's get on to some code. That's how we learn. We can do all the theory in the world, but we're not going to learn much just by doing examples like that. Let's get on to some code and really learn some stuff. Let's get going. I've got a simple uh, CSS file and I've got an HTML file here. As we can see, we've got an opening uh, tag for the doc type, then we've got a header with the stuff in there for the, the viewport for the mobile devices. We've also got the link to the single style sheet. We've got a header uh, role banner, which is the HTML5 element for headers. That's just how you should be um, coding up sites in 2014 with these HTML5 elements. Then we've got our div main and role main and then we've got our three internal columns in there and that's what we're going to be working on mainly with sidebar left, main content and sidebar right. Then we've got a footer element, HTML5 again with role content info and then we've got some dummy uh, paragraph text within that. So let's have a look what that looks like in our browser. As you can see it's very straightforward. We've got our header and then we've got our lipsum text and we use, as you can see there's no columns there at the moment. That is because there's no content and it's just dummy divs I've got set up. There's no content. So let's add some content in those divs and fill them out just so we can see what's going on. So I'm just copying and pasting those paragraph of dummy text across. Let's go back into our browser again. As we expect, now we see the dummy content. It's with 100% on each column. There's no style in there. That's just by default how we would expect our code and page to be laid out. So let's go and add in some CSS stuff and have a look at the CSS file. What I've done, uh, if you look at the other video, I will uh, show you how to set up a CSS and initial HTML in more detail. I've got border box on there and I've also got uh, normalize, which is all this code in here. But let's not talk about that too much. Let's go in and add some floats. That's what we're concentrating on today. So if I add sidebar left and then float that to the left and give that a width, let's say, of 20%. As we're talking responsive today, we are giving our percentages, our values in percentages. So we refresh that, then we can see that that column has floated to the left as we'd expect. Let's just give all our columns now a different colour just to see exactly what is going on. Give red to our sidebar left, sidebar right we can give a blue to and we can give our main content, our main column, let's make that, uh, let's make that green. And if we go back, what's the main column called again? It's just main content. So main 
content. To go back and refresh, then we see our three different uh, columns. As we accept, we've floated the uh, content, the sidebar on the left, and then we see other columns which are not yet been styled up. And then we've got our footer following in the bottom. That's exactly what we'd expect. So let's go and give sidebar left and right uh, the same property. So we copy and paste that and uh, give sidebar left and right the same properties. Float them both left with a width of 20%. Let's see what that does. Now something's wrong there. Yeah, we've not got a comma in. So that's what we expect there. We've got two floated columns and then we've got their middle column. We really need this middle column to be floated as well to complete our initial construction. So main content we can put in there float equals left. And as we've got two columns of 20%, which add up to 40%, this width to be 100% and really fill the screen has got to be 60%. So we have width 60% on there and refresh and we should see three columns which we do we've got column on the sidebar left then we've got our main content then we've got sidebar right so that's really what we expect to do and uh, that's what we expect to see now look at doing another couple of things let's add a background color into our main content and let's also try and add a bit of padding between the footer and the bottom of the main content as well so we go into our css and add in footer margin, top, let's say 40 pixels. Refresh your browser and absolutely nothing happens. And something weird going on here. Let's also try add a background color into our main. Background color of gray. Refresh our browser and again, nothing happens. Something strange is going on here and we've run into a problem. We need to clear these floats to make our uh, design jump into what we'd expect to see. If we look at this diagram here, our parent element uh, has an improper height and that's what we'd expect to see there. Our parent element encompassing our floats left and our float right or our floats, all our floats. And that's what we'd expect to see but what's happening here is this. Our parent has an improper height and we need to make this happen by using a clear fix or some kind of HTML in our code just to jump it in and let's have a look at that. The first way we can do this is to use HTML after the last floated element which is sidebar right div style equals clear both close off that div refresh our design and let's see what happens. There we go that's exactly what we would expect to see we see we've got our background color grey and we've also got our margin between our footer element and the bottom of our main content. That's what we expect to see. The only problem with this um, bit of code is a little bit dirty. You don't really want to have presentational styles within your HTML. That should be done by CSS. So let's look at another method. Take that out. Go back, refresh. And that's what we're seeing without our clear fix. Another method is to use an overflow auto or hidden on our parent element, our main. So if we could add in overflow hidden on our main element. Let's see what happens again. That's it, it's jumped, and that is what we'd expect to happen after clearing these elements. The third method we can use if we take out overflow hidden. So the the problem with overflow hidden is that if you have got um, elements or design bits or whatever you want to call them out with your um, main content, it's going to hide that. And that's sometimes not what we want to do. Some designs, some com complex designs, we're not wanting that to happen. So that's why overflow hidden sometimes isn't the best bet. The final method is a clear fix. And it's uh, the best method, really, in my opinion. Um, it's completely CSS based and there's no problems with overflow. And it's just the best method for clearing CSS floats. So if we've got, look at the code, we've used a class of group and we've got the after, which means it's going to insert a little element after that group. And we've got content of 
there's nothing, so empty content. We could put text in there, and that would show in our HTML, as we can see there. That's not what we want. We just want that to be empty. And we're using display table, and we're also using clear both to clear those floats. And for IE6 and IE7, we're also using zoom1, which triggers has layout, which is a rather complicated um, issue to go into now. Now add in the class of group to our main uh, class, add that as well as main and group on the same div. Now we'll activate our clear fix. If we go back and refresh, we see our clear fix in action once again. So that completes uh, this little section of CSS floats, but since this is a responsive tutorial, we're going to look at making this design into a responsive and just clearing these floats and making them look a lot, lot better in a smaller device such as a mobile phone or a tablet. So let's look at that now. The first thing we want to do is to make a media query. And if I do that, shortcut, that is our media query there and it's saying min width, if there is minimum width of 1000, 2000, 1024 pixels, then apply these CSS styles. And we want a max width of one of the, so that means anything less than 1024 pixels, then apply these styles. So what we want to do is, let's copy and paste, sidebar left, sidebar right. And we also want to add in our main content on there. And what we want to do there is to give a float of none, and we want to give a width of auto. Let's go back into design and refresh. And we're not expecting to see anything here because our browser is over 1024 pixels wide. But if we go less, then we see that our columns have collapsed. And it's very, very easy for us to put CSS floats into responsive design that way. All we've done, if we looked at the code again, there is if you use our media query, sidebar left, sidebar right, and main content, that's the three inner uh, divs there. We've got our main there. Then we've got sidebar left, main content, and sidebar right. And they've all been applied a float of none and a width of auto, and that has jumped our columns into responsive mode in a single column mode. Very, very straightforward to get floats to then collapse and to work in a linear mode for responsive designs. Simple stuff. <laughs> so that completes this uh, short tutorial on CSS floats. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch and I'll try my best to help out. Um, if you leave a comment in the show notes and also follow the site on Twitter, the site is webpayload.com where all the videos will be held. Um, and I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Keep up with the shows. Um, the best way is probably on Twitter. My personal account is Johnny Mac and there's the web payload account. There's also the RSS feed and there is also traditional email, which is a great way to keep up with the shows. Thanks.